Hi, this is the Molecular Genetics uh, review or summary for AP Biology. Um, this will cover chapters 19 and 20. You're expected to read chapter 16 through 18 still. Um, this is going to focus mainly on the molecular genetics, but I wanted to show how we got here. So far we've already talked about Mendelian genetics, which is just the basic ABCs of genetics, uh, Punnett squares, those type of things. Then we got into um, non-Mendelian genetics that dealt with chromosomes when they actually got better technology and could see what was going on with individual chromosomes. We had a better idea of how alleles were carried on. They're no longer called factors. We figured out that every gene had alleles. Um, we start figuring out things that about um, uh, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Independent assortment. That's what I was looking for. Um, Mendel's uh, independent assortment sort of breaks down a little bit because chromosomes, uh, the genes that are on the same chromosomes don't really sort independently, but through the fruit fly experiments that Morgan did, figured out that that really was uh, more accurate as to what was going on. And modern day, now we're getting to the point where we're actually getting down to gene sequence. So we've unraveled our chromosomes now and gotten down to the nitty gritty of the actual order of the A's and C's and T's and G's on DNA, and that's what molecular genetics is all about. Um, so we're going to discuss some of the molecular genetics tools that are used. Um, we're going to end up at uh, DNA microarrays, which is the uh, the most promising technology that's coming in the very near future, near future from molecular genetic technology. So uh, that's what this little summary is going to be about. Um, I'd still really recommend that you read chapter 16 through 18, especially if you're aiming for a 5 on the AP exam. It's all things that we've already covered. It's the basis of DNA, um, replication, transcription, translation, uh, basic structure, prokaryotic, eukaryotic DNA, um, non-genetic portions, introns and exons in DNA. It, it covers all of that in chapter 16 through 18. They're short reads. I'd really recommend you take a look at those if you're planning on uh, trying to ace the AP exam. Um, this presentation and what we cover in class is mainly going to focus on chapters 19 and 20. Uh, I can get a few of those topics in from uh, 16 through 18 while we cover it. So the first thing we're going to discuss is gene regulation uh, and how genes actually get read. Um, we should know that genes are uh, on the DNA. We typically think of this DNA strand as one big long laid out ribbon but that's not really accurate. That's not really how DNA behaves inside a eukaryotic cell, especially. Um, so we should get rid of that. It's more like this. Um, what we're looking at here, this is a DNA strand that's round, uh, wound up and packaged tightly inside the nucleus. Uh, remember that eukaryotic cells have a nucleus while prokaryotes don't. Uh, prokaryotes just kind of have their DNA laying out more like the old version of DNA that I just pulled off the screen. In a eukaryote, we actually have packaging going on, and that packaging is the first step in regulation. These little things that look like little balloons here, those are called histones. The think um, uh, toilet paper is wrapped around the little brown toilet paper tube. Um, that's kind of how histones behave to DNA. Uh, and so the DNA is tightly packaged up around these, and how that regulates genes, if I'm a gene, a part of DNA that actually carries code, and I'm wrapped around a histone, um, then I can't really be read because I'm tightly packaged up and my I'm not the 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 bonds between the nitrogen bases aren't available to be unzipped um, because they're packaged up tightly. It's all wadded up in there, and you, you, what you really need to do is get the DNA unraveled, unwound, so that you can gain access to those nitrogen bases that actually carry the code, so that transcription can happen. You also see these other things in this little picture that I brought up here these blobs are transcription factors. These are actually going to be the the, um, the, the, the proteins that bring along the, the actual transcription unit, which is going to be comprised mainly of RNA polymerase. That's what actually makes the RNA mRNA based on the DNA code. So, um, histone is critically important to this whole business. We're going to talk about histones here a little bit. It's, our, it's your first level of gene regulation of turning on and off genes is going to be in, involving these histones. So, here's a picture of a chromosome, an entire chromosome, and the chromosome consists mainly of DNA, but there's also proteins in there that we just talked about, these histones. Um, and the histones serve as, just like the paper towel tube, um, but the histones themselves, the histones themselves are, are locked together or, or packaged up. 
Um, this is what's called super coiling of DNA. It's coiled, and then the coils are coiled, and then the coils are coiled around uh, these histones. So everything is very packaged up. That's how we get all this DNA to fit inside a nucleus. Uh, the histones themselves are all bunched up. Uh, one thing that can be done to unbunch this DNA so that it can be read is that we can add acetyl groups or methyl groups to these things called histone tails. These are little dangly bits off the side of the histone protein. If you add an acetyl group, uh, the acetyl groups repel each other. There's a repulsive force there. And instead of having a situation where all these histones are grouped together, the histones separate, they come apart, and now these stretches of DNA in between become readable because it's stretched out. You've got a single strand, and now we have access. The, the actual transcription factors and uh, RNA polymerase can get in there, undo our nitrogen bases, and start reading the A's and T's and C's and G's, reading the genetic code. Uh, so that's one way that DNA actually gets... Um, uh, is regulated, how the DNA code is regulated, how much DNA is being transcribed at any one given time. Uh, the second level of regulation acts on the DNA strand itself, and we've already talked a little bit about things like transcription factors this year. Um, so I'll go back here. This is a DNA strand that's currently not being read. If I put a transcription factor in place, now RNA polymerase knows where it's supposed to attach, start unzipping this piece of DNA here, reading the code, and that's where mRNA is going to start being transcribed from the DNA code. Um, if I wanted to make more of this protein, like earlier this year we went over an example where a cell is trying to respond to its environment and it suddenly needs to make a whole bunch of one particular protein, let's say a sodium ion pump. Okay. Uh, if I need to make a whole bunch of those sodium ion pumps right away to lower the sodium level inside the cell, well, first I'd add a transcription factor, but if I'm not transcribing enough mRNA fast enough to go do translation to make all the protein I need, I'd need to accelerate this. So what I could do upstream in these promoter regions that are found before most genes, I could add um, some of these little uh, enhancement factors, okay? These are, gonna, these are like accelerator pedals for the gene. And what that's going to do is basically you can kind of think of it as drawing extra attention to this transcription factor. And then if I still need it to go faster, I can add more or I can add less. So what I'm doing here is, is pushing down on the accelerator for how fast I'm going to transcribe this gene. So don't think of transcription as an on-off process. It's really not. You can, you can, some genes need to be transcribed all the time constantly. Some genes can be shut off most of the time and you only need to transcribe them under certain conditions for the cell. Um, and you can control that by adding or taking away some of these enhancer units, these promoter units. Um, that's going to control how fast we do transcription. That's, that's the idea behind regulation is how fast we do transcription, how fast you actually make the protein products in the cell. Um, all of this control, these transcription factors, these promoters, um, that's all a part of epigenetics. And epigenetics is critically important. It's one of these things that, that the, the research in epigenetics right now is just going crazy because we, we know where all the genes are and we know what all the genes do thanks to the Human Genome Project, um, but we don't know how the genes interplay with each other. We don't know how transcribing this promoter protein over here is going to come back, link onto the DNA, and accelerate the transcription of this other gene. So it's this weird interplay between proteins and the actual protein synthesis. That's called epigenetics. It's important. We need to know about it. Uh, then your book goes into talking about cancer quite a bit. We've already discussed cancer at length this year, that it's an accumulation of, of mutations. Um, a lot of these mutations are the result of problems with these regulatory pathways, though, how fast or how slowly you're transcribing and translating different proteins that control things like evading apoptosis and uh, self-sustaining growth signals. Um, limitless replicative potential, those kinds of things, the, the, these hallmarks of, of cancer right here, these mutations that you would have to have going on inside a cancer cell so that all of these things are going on.